Okay, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. So, like Yitzhak said, um, Firefox has a file called uh, hiddenwindow.html. The file, when, uh, when it comes with Firefox, is empty. It's an empty HTML file. What we have done is replace that file with a file with a small script. Also, I'll show you an example of uh, Hello World. You can see that this is the same file with the uh, uh, added uh, Hello World script. If I copy it and replace the original uh, hidden window.html and run Firefox, you can see that the first thing that pops up is the message box. And you can see by the title that we are in the resource URI. OK, so we know we can run JavaScript. Now we'll try to get a file. Uh, in this example, uh, boot INI from the root of uh, drive C. If we try this, we will see that once we run Firefox, we get a uh, permission denied message. And that is because we're still locked in the resource URI. So we're going to try and jailbreak out of it like it's explained. OK, for us to jailbreak, we first need to get the directory in which hidden window resides. So we're going to tr uh, try and list the, the directory that we are currently in, like you explained, with a simple XML HTTP request for the current directory. If I copy this over here and run Firefox, we can see that the resource doesn't, uh, does allow us to list the files in its current directory. And if you can see up here, you can see that we have the directory that we are currently in. So we can parse that out and uh, obtain the present working directory. Do that here. Here is the same script as before, but instead of, uh, of returning the response text, we, do, uh, we manipulate it a bit and just cut out the present working directory. Here we have it. We're still in resource, but we have the, the directory. So now we can jailbreak and attempt again to get the boot INI file. So here, here you can see the jailbreaking. If we don't have a search string, we change the location to uh, get current directory like we did before, uh, concat hidden window, and add the search string. Next time we are called, we're going to get the file content. Uh, the file content. Um, here it is. The get file contents uh, requests boot.ini from the root of drive C. So we'll call it here. And run Firefox. And here we have it. This is the, the data that once we obtained it, we can do whatever we want with it. OK, so now for uh, for Jinx. Jinx is a bit longer. It contains a few functions that we can uh, we can remotely call. Uh, the Jinx window pop up will pop up a window remotely uh, from what uh, a point request uh, attack site will just loop and create uh, many iframes and connect to it. If we have many bots, it can theoretically be effective. And the main Jinx send file will send a file to the to the master site to the to our host. In this case, um, I have a virtual machine, and here's the the interface to control with the with the bots. Currently, no bots has registered with it. Um, if I run Jinx, I'll copy it into Firefox and run Jinx and run Firefox. Firefox loaded as normal. We don't have any alerts, any nothing, but Jinx in the background has registered with this, uh, with our site. Now, if we want, we can select, uh, many bots can register. We select which we want to command. We just pick a, a command. This is arbitrary JavaScript. You can write anything you want here. Here we're calling a file that already exists in hiddenwindow.html. We want uh, boot INI and we'll submit the query. 
the query has been registered, and now Jinx uh, got the command, and uh, these alerts are just for demonstration purposes. Uh, in real world, the user won't know that anything is happening behind the scene. Um, okay, we are buffing root i and i. We're told it's 211 bytes. And if we return to our virtual machine, we can see that it actually uh, connected to our save file PHP that received the parameter from the get, uh, from the get string. And in stolen files, we have the file that we stole. Um, in addition to stealing files, we can actually uh, pop up windows. If we select this and for example, uh, google.com and submit the query. And we can see that the user just had a, a window pop up. It could be a capture, it could be an advertisement. And this whole thing can work on as many bots as, uh, as hosts uh, that were infected. And they all register with this control uh, script. Uh, that's it. Um, you can add any functionality that JavaScript uh, allows you to. We can run any. We're limited only to the to the JavaScript uh, limitations. We can add new functionality, upgrade, um, and that's basically it. We have uh, given the Jinx source code in uh, Black Hat uh, CDs. Uh, you can guys take a look at that. Uh, our email appears in it, so if you have any questions or any suggestions, uh, you can drop us a line. Um, <clears throat> as I said, Firefox 3 at the moment seems uh, safe from Jinx, so if you have any doubts or if you feel the computer is acting a bit strange, uh, we strongly suggest that you will update to Firefox 3. Um, is there any questions about the demo, about the design? Uh, I had a question, just curious, what happens, what does Firefox do if the hidden window HTML file is not there, if it's missing or corrupt or something like that? If you, in the resource directory, does it start normally when uh, that file is not there? Uh, so, sorry, can, can uh, you repeat it again, please? Well, I'm, I'm just wondering if on the client's computer in the resource directory, if the hidden window.html file doesn't uh -huh. exist or is corrupt? It, it's exists. It's, it's a file that comes virtually with Right, but what if uh, you made a mistake and you overwrote it with something wrong or you d accidentally deleted it? I mean, does it, Firefox start up normally or no? Um, or does it create it, create a new default one? I, I do believe it will create a, a new default one, but I'm not sure. But basically, th this file is part of Mozilla backend. So it's, it, it does have a functionality, it does have a purpose. We only abused it, but it's basically uh, a place to store variables for all sorts of plugins that might that you might have in your Firefox. So if you will delete this file, you will cause some functionality disorder in your browser. Depends whatever your plugin requires this file or not. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you get to the mic? I'm sorry if you mentioned this before. This doesn't work in IE. It only works in Firefox. C or? Currently, we're leeching upon Firefox. But, um, but basically, if you take this idea, this concept, this technology, Ajax, everything is ready, and everything can be also implemented in Internet Explorer, giving a very good entry point or some sort of vulnerability that will allow this type of things, we can implement it in IE. The reason we pick Firefox uh, is because there, there's a common belief that IE is weaker, and if we would have written this for IE, people would have said, oh, this is a, just a specific vulnerability, or it's something very, very uh, connected to IE. Uh, the fact that we took Mozilla, which is a, quite a good browser, and my favorite browser, uh, to demonstrate that it's, it's a concept and the technology which allows this type of malware to exist, and the entry point is something that will change dozen times over the time depends on the version or the distribution. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I think you mentioned this, but I didn't quite catch it. Um, 
So if someone browsed the website you control, how do you get your JavaScript to run under the context of the hidden window HTML? You're saying that 